we will cover sketching, dimensioning, extruding shapes in and out, and coloring and applying surfaces. So the first thing you want to do is open up your Inventor software, and then you can either click this icon right here for a new part, or if you click the new folder, you can click standard IPT. They'll both do the same thing. Then click create. Once your window is open, you want to create a sketch of your linking cube. So we're going to click Start 2D Sketch. When this comes up, you want to click the XY plane. All right, a cube has square faces. So I'm going to use the rectangle icon because a square is a type of rectangle. Click the rectangle icon. Bring your mouse cursor down here to the middle of the screen and click the very center point of the screen. Now I'm going to simply drag my mouse a little ways up and left and notice that I can fill in these boxes. Do not click at this point. Simply type in one because we want this edge of the cube to be one inch. There we go. Now I'm going to push the tab, not enter, the tab button and type one again. At this point I can press enter and I will have a square that is one inch on each side. Now I can't see the entire square on my screen, so if I use the track wheel on my mouse and scroll up, I will zoom out and can see the entire square. Next, I'm going to click the Finish Sketch icon right here, and it looks like I'll have to zoom out again, and now you can see the square that I've created. Okay, to turn this into a three-dimensional object, we're going to use the Extrude icon. Click Extrude. Then notice it's already guessed that I wanted this to come out one inch because I made the other edges one inch, which happens to be correct in this case. But let's say I didn't want it to be one inch. I could push backspace or just type the number directly into this window. Another option I have, if I click this triangle up here, will bring down more options that I can choose from. I can also type my distance in this box right here and click OK. They'll both do the same thing. So once I click OK, I now have a cube. Next, I'm going to put the peg in my linking cube. To do this, I'm going to need to create the object, the sketch. So I'm going to click Start 2D Sketch. Now I'm going to click the face of the cube that I want to put my sketch on. I want to put the sketch on the top face, so I'm going to click the top face of my cube. It'll rotate it so I can see that in an orthographic view. Now the peg is a circle shape, so I'm going to click the circle icon, bring my mouse back down here, and click somewhere on the face of my cube, anywhere you want, and simply move your mouse, and a number will appear. Now instead of trying to guess exactly 0.5 and get it right there, I can simply type in 0.5 and press enter, and I will get a, a circle with a diameter of 0.5. All right, now I need this peg to be perfectly centered on this face of my cube. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the dimension icon. Click the dimension icon. Then you're going to click the center point of your circle. And I'm going to click, I want to center it top to bottom first. I can click the top or I can click the bottom. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to click the top edge here. And notice when I move my mouse, these numbers appear. If I click somewhere on my screen, I can type in to that box. The edge was one inch, so halfway would be 0 0.5 again. So I type in 0 0.5 and press enter, and now my circle is centered top to bottom. Now I want to center it left to right, so I'm going to do the same process. Click the center point of my circle, move to the left or right edge of my cube and click, and then simply drag my mouse down and a number will appear. I have to click on the screen again so that I can type into the box. Again, it's going to be 0 0.5 to get it perfectly in the middle and press enter. And now my shape is perfectly centered top to bottom and left to right. Okay, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click the finish sketch icon because I'm done drawing my circle. 
Next, I want to make it stick out because the peg sticks out of my linking cube. To make something stick out or go in, you always use the extrude icon. So I'm going to click extrude. Then I've got to tell the program, what do I want to extrude? I want to extrude the circle that I just drew. So I'm going to click inside that circle. Now notice that it guessed I wanted it to be one inch because that's what I used last time. Well, the peg is not one inch. We're going to use a fourth of an inch, 0 0.25. I've got two options. I can type 0 0.25 into this box or this box over here. Either one will do the same thing. So I'm just going to type into this box 0 0.25. Two, five. And then you can press enter or click the green check mark. And now you have your peg. Next, I need to make the holes in each face of my cube. So I'm going to create, or I'm going to click start 2D sketch again. Come down here and click whichever face I want to put the hole in first. Again, the hole is circle shaped just like the peg. So I'm going to click the circle icon, click somewhere on this face and simply move my mouse. I'm not holding the left button down, I just clicked and then moved my mouse. Now I want this to be the same diameter as my peg, so I'm gonna type in 0 0.5 and press enter. Just like my peg, I want the hole to be centered top to bottom and left to right. So I'm gonna click the dimension tab, then I'm gonna click the center of my circle, click the top edge of, my of the cube, move my mouse over, oh, I'm gonna have to try again. Click the center point of my circle, click the top edge of my cube, move my mouse, and you'll see a number appear. Simply click somewhere on the face of that cube, type in 0 0.5, enter, and now it's centered top to bottom. To center it left to right, I'm going to click the center point. I'm going to click the left or right edge, doesn't matter, I'm going to use the right edge this time. Simply move my mouse a little bit and a number will appear. Click on the screen, type in 0 0.5 again press enter, or I can click the green check. They both do the same thing. And now you see I have a circle that is perfectly centered top to bottom and left to right. I'm gonna go up here and click the finish sketch because I'm done making my circle. To make it stick out or go in, we use the extrude icon. We have to tell the program what to extrude, so I'm gonna click inside the circle I just made. But notice it thinks I want it to stick out because that's what I did last time. But I'm making a hole, not a peg. So it does have the correct distance, 0 0.25, down here as well. But I want it to go into the cube instead of stick out. So I'm going to click this right here, which is for cutting into a shape. And notice that it changed this window as well to make it go into the shape. And I can see that it changed going into the shape, into the cube. Click OK. And now I have a hole that is going into my cube 0.25 inches. So I'm going to repeat this process again on this other face. So simply repeat this process on the remaining faces of your cube until five faces have a hole and one face has a peg. Now you can see on my cube that I have a peg on top and all the other faces have a hole that is 0.25 inches in and 0.5 inches in diameter. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to color the faces. For this project, every face must be a different color. You have two options when it comes to coloring your cube. You can make them an actual color or you can apply a surface. So in order to change the color, I'm going to click where I want to color. So I'm going to click the face right here. And I'm going to come up here to the wheel that has a little triangle next to it and click that icon. And notice now that there are several different colors I can choose from. Let's say I like green. So I'm going to click over here on the green section and I can change, I can click this black bar and move it around the circle to all these different shades that I like. I can also click these preset colors. If I click this little black tab here, there's a green. This one takes me to yellow. This one takes me to orange, to red, to purple, to a uh, turquoise color. And that way you can get everything to match perfectly. Or if you really like, if you find something else that you really like, you can simply remember these numbers or write them down. And then when you go to color the peg, you can click in here and then type in whatever number you want to get the exact color combination that you like. To keep it easy, I'm just going to make this red.
So I clicked the little black tab right here and it turned the entire thing red. So now I'm going to click plus because I want to keep coloring things red. Now I'm going to click the uh, part of the peg that sticks up and I'm going to click the red again and I'm going to click plus and then I'm going to click the top of the peg. You'll have to probably click it twice and then I'm going to click the little red black the little the little black dash right here to turn it red now that I'm done turning things red I'm going to click I can click check or if I wanted to keep adding colors I could click plus and then choose other surfaces that I want to apply the color to but I want to show you how to change the surface so I'm gonna click the check and move over here to the surface so I'm gonna click the face that I want to apply a surface to then I'm gonna go move my mouse up here to this window that says default in it and click the little triangle and I get all these different surfaces that I can choose from a couple hundred of them so I'm gonna click on diamond plate because I like the way that looks so click diamond plate and notice now that the face is diamond plate now I want to click I want to change the color of everything on this face including the inside edge of the hole and the back face of the hole so I'm gonna click the inside edge come up here to the default box click diamond plate again and notice the inside edge has changed the diamond plate now I'm gonna click the back face click the little triangle diamond plate again and now the entire face and indentation are diamond plate simply repeat this process on all your faces until everything is a completely different color alright now that every single face of my cube is a different color or texture I'm ready to move on to the next step of my project.